Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Oracle Open World 2016. Brought to you by Oracle. Now, here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco at Oracle Open World 2016. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, co-CEO of Silicon Angle with Peter Burris, head of research at Silicon Angle, as well as the general manager of Wikibon Research. Our next guest is Siddharth Agarwal, vice president of product management and strategy at Oracle Cloud Platform. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Yes, hi John, great to be here. So, I'll see a lot of great stuff, the core messaging from the, from the corporate headquarters, cloud, 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 mm -hmm. but there's so much stuff going on in Oracle mm -hmm. in the, on all the applications. We've had many great conversations uh, around the different kind of, how the products are all fitting into the cloud model, but Peter and I were talking yesterday at our wrap up about we're the developers yeah. now, and someone made a joke, oh, they're at Java 1, which is great, there are a lot of them are at Java 1, but there's a huge developer opportunity within the Oracle core ecosystem mm -hmm. because cloud is very developer friendly. Mm -hmm. DevOps, agile, mm -hmm. cloud native environments really cater to real software developers. Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's a big focus area for us because we want to get developers excited about the ability to build the next generation of applications on the Oracle Cloud. Cloud native applications, microservices based applications, and having those, that environment be open with choice of programming languages, open in terms of choice of which databases they want, not just Oracle database, NoSQL, MySQL, other databases, and then choice of the compute shape that you're using, containers, bare metal, virtual environments, and then open standards. So giving a very open, modern, easy platform for developers so that they'll build on our platform. You know, one of the things that we always talk about at events is when we talk to companies really um, trying to win the hearts and minds of developers, um, you always hear, we want to win the developers. I mean, they're like they're like an object. Like, you don't really win developers. Mm -hmm. Developers are very fickle, but very loyal if you get the, yes. if you can align with what they were trying yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. And they'll reject hardcore tactics of selling and lock-in, so, yeah, that's a concern, that's a psychology of the developers. Um, so they, want, they want cool, they want, but they want relevance. Mm -hmm. And they want to align with their, with their goals. How do you see that? Because I think Oracle is a great ecosystem for a developer. Right. How do you manage that psychology? Because Oracle has traditionally been yeah, you know, yeah. an enterprise software company, so software's great, but Amazon has a good lead on the developers right now. Yeah, no, look, at the end of the day, you have to get developers realizing that they can build excellent, fun, creative applications to create differentiation for their organizations, right? And do it fast with cool technologies. So we're giving them, for example, not just the ability to build in with Java EE, but now they can build in Java SE with Tomcat, they can build with Node, they can build with PHP, and soon they'll be able to do it with Ruby and Python. And we're giving that in a container-based platform where they don't necessarily have to manage the container. They get automatic scalability, they get backup patching, all of that stuff taken care of for them. Also, you know, being able to build rich mobile applications, that's really important for them. So how they can build mobile applications using Ionic, Angular, whatever JavaScript framework they want, but on the back end, they have to be able to connect these mobile apps to the enterprise. They have to get location-based insight into where the person is who's using the mobile app. They need to be able to get insight into how the mobile app is being used. And you've heard Larry talk about the chatbot platform, right? How do you engage with customers in a different way through Facebook Messenger? So those are some of the new technology that we're making very easily available. And then at the end of the day, giving them choice of databases. So it's not just Oracle database that you get up and running in the cloud and it's provisioned, managed, automated for you. But now you can ask for NoSQL uh, 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 databases. Uh, you can have Cassandra, MongoDB run on our IaaS. And MySQL, we just announced MySQL Enterprise Edition available as a service in the public cloud. You know, one of the things that developers love, you know, being an ex-developer myself in the old days, um, is, uh, and, and you know, as we talk to them, the, they're very loyal, but they're very pragmatic, and yes. they're engineers, basically, they're software engineers. They love, um, they love tools, great tools mm -hmm. that work, they want support. Mm -hmm. 
but they want distribution of their product that they, they create, their yes. creators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So distribution ultimately means monetization, but developers don't harp too much on mm -hmm. money making, although they want to make money. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be abandoned on those three areas. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to be disloyal. Mm -hmm. that they, I mean, they want to be loyal, they want support, and they want to have distribution. Yeah, yeah. What does Oracle bring to the table to address those three things? Yeah, there, there are a few ways in which we're thinking of helping developers with distribution. So for example, one is um, developers are building applications that they're exposing their APIs. And they want to be able to monetize those APIs because they're exposing business process and a logic from their organization as APIs. So we're giving them the ability to have portals where they can expose their APIs and monetize the APIs. The other thing is we've also got the Oracle Cloud Marketplace where developers can put their uh, uh, stuff on the Oracle Cloud Marketplace so others can be leveraging that content and they're getting paid for that. How does that work? Does they plug into the pass layer or is what, how does the marketplace fit in? If so, I'm a developer. Sure, the marketplace is a catalog, right? And you can put your stuff on the catalog, then when you want to drag and drop something, you drop it onto Oracle Pass or onto Oracle IaaS. So you're taking the application that you built and then you got to have something that it's so going to get. So composing a solution on the fly if you're a customer. Yeah, so, well, yeah, exactly. Just pulling a pre-composed solution that a developer had built and being able to drop it onto the Oracle Pass and the IaaS platform. So the developer gets a customer, mm -hmm and they get paid for that through the catalog. Yes, yes, yes. And, and it's also better for customers, right? They're getting all sorts of capability pre-built for them, available for them, ready for them, right? Okay, so one of the things that's come up, and we've heard it, wasn't really amplified too much, but we saw it, and it got some some uh, some play in the, in, in the developer community, is the messaging on the containers and the microservices you yes. mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge deal right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. They love that ability to have the containerization. Right. We even heard containers driving down into the IaaS area. Mm -hmm. So, with the network virtualization, stuff going on, so how is that going to help developers? What confidence yeah. will you share to developers that you guys are backing the container standards? Absolutely. Driving that, participating in yeah. that. Well, I think there are a couple things. First of all, containers uh, are not that easy in terms of when you have to orchestrate hundreds of containers, you have to register these containers. Today, the technologies for containers to be managed, the orchestration technology, which is things like Swarm, Kubernetes, Mesos, etc., they're changing very rapidly. And then in order to use these technologies, Technologies, you have to have a scheduler and things like that. So there's a stack of three or four relatively nascent technologies changing at a relatively fast pace. And that creates a very unstable stack for someone to create production level stuff for them, right? The Docker container that they yeah. built actually runs on this slightly shaky like stack. Like Kubernetes or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what we've done is we're saying, look, we're giving you container as a service. So if you've already created Docker containers, you can now bring those containers as, it, as is to the Oracle Public Cloud. You can say this application consists of these 20 containers, and then from that point on, we've taken care of putting the containers out, scaling the containers up, registering the containers, managing the containers for you, so you're just being able to use that environment as a developer. And on the, you know, if you want to use the PaaS, that's the IS. If you want to use the PaaS, then the PHP, Node, Java SC capability that I told you yeah. was also containerized. You're just not exposed to Docker there. Actually, I know he's got a question, but I want to just point out one, Luis, it was on Monday, and he pointed out the JSON aspect of the database was, I thought was pretty compelling. Mm -hmm. From a developer standpoint, JSON is very, really popular with mm -hmm. managing APIs. Yeah, yeah. So having that in the database is really kind of a good thing, so uh, people should check out that interview. Very quickly, the uh, one of the historical norm for developers is you start with a data model, mm -hmm. and then you take various types of tools and you build code that operates against that development mm -hmm. or that basic data model. And Oracle obviously has, that's a big part of what your business has historically been. As you move forward, as we start looking at big data and the enormous investment that businesses are making in mm -hmm. trying to understand how to utilize that technology, mm -hmm. it's not going as well as a lot of folks might have thought it would, yeah, yeah. in part mm -hmm. because the developer community hasn't fully engaged mm -hmm. how to generate value yes. out of those mm -hmm. basic stacks mm -hmm. of technology. Mm -hmm. How is Oracle, who has obviously a leadership position in database mm -hmm. and is now recommitting itself to some of these new big data technologies, how are you going to differentially, or do you anticipate, yeah, yeah. differentially presenting that yeah. to developers so they can do more with big data-like yeah, so technologies? There, there are a few things that we've done. Wonderful question. Uh, first of all, 
you know, just creating the Hadoop cluster, managing the Hadoop cluster, scaling out the Hadoop cluster requires a lot of effort. So we're giving you big data as a service where you don't have to worry about that underlying infrastructure. The next problem is how do you get data into that data lake? And the data is being generated at tremendous volume. You think about Internet of Things, you think about devices, etc. They're generating data at tremendous volume. We're giving you the ability to actually be able to use a streaming a Kafka Spark-based service to be able to bring data in or to use Oracle data integration to be able to stream data in from, let's say, something happening on the Oracle database into your big data hub. So giving you very easy ways to get your data into the data hub and, and being able to do that with HDFS, with high, whichever you know, a target system you want to use. Then on top of that data, the next challenge is, well, what do you visualize, right? I mean, you've got all this data together, but a very small percentage is actually giving you insight. So how do you look at this and find that needle in the haystack? So for that, we're giving you the ability to do analytics with the BI Cloud service to get insight into the data, where we're actually doing machine learning, and we're getting insight from the data and presenting those data sets that are most relevant, that are most insightful, by giving you some smart insights up front, and by giving you visualizations. So for example, you search for, in all these forms, what did the user say as they entered in the data, okay? The best way to represent that is a by a tag cloud. So giving you visualization that makes sense. So you can do rich discovery and get rich insight from the BI cloud service and the data visualization cloud service. And lastly, you know, if you have, let's say, five years of data on an air conditioner, and the product manager is trying to get insight into that data, saying, hey, what should I fix so that that doesn't happen next time around? We're giving you the big data discovery cloud service, where you don't have to set up that data lab. You don't have to set up the models, et cetera. You can just say, replicate two billion rows. We replicate it in the cloud for you within our data store, and you can start getting insight from it. So how are developers going to start using these tools? Because it's clear that data scientists can use it. It's clear that people that have more of an analytic background can use it. How are developers going to start grabbing a lot of these capabilities, especially with machine learning and AI and some of the other things on the horizon? And you and how, how do you guys anticipate you're going to present this stuff yeah. to a developer community so that they can, again, start creating more value for the business? Is that something that's on the horizon? You know, it's, it's here. It's oh, okay. not on the horizon, it's here. Where, you know, we're helping developers, for example, build a microservice that wants to get data from a treadmill that a uh, one of the customers is running on, right? Where they're trying to get data from one of their customers on their treadmills. Well, the developer now creates a microservice where the data from the treadmill has been ingested into okay. a data lake, right? We made it very easy for them to ingest into that data lake. And then that microservice is able to very easily access the data, expose only the portion of the data that are interesting. For example, the developer wants to create a very rich mobile app that presents the uh, uh, customer running with all the insights into the average daily calorie burn and what they're doing, et cetera. Now they can take that data, do analytics on it, and very easily be able to present it in the mobile platform without having to work through all the plumbing of the data lake, of the ingestion, of the visualization, of the mobile piece, of the integration against backend system. All of that is being provided so developers can really plug and play and have fun rather yeah, than worrying the about fun. the infrastructure. Building is the fun part. They yes. want to have fun. They, they want building. relevance, great tools, and not have to worry about the infrastructure. And they yes. want distribution, they want their work to be showcased. That's what I mean by relevance. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean yeah. by relevance. They want to work on the cool stuff, and, and, and again, it's and a lot be relevant. Of it. Well, it's kind of like, I mean, developers has turned into kind of, I call it the nightclub effect. There are some cool, coding is so much fun now, there's new stuff that comes out. They want to hack with the, with the new codes. They want to, you know, play with stuff that's fit the form factor of either yeah. device or whatnot. Yeah, and one, one other thing that we've done is, we've made the, you know, all developers are today doing continuous delivery, because they need to release code really fast, right? It's no longer about yeah. months, it's about days or hours that yeah. they have to release. So we're giving a complete continuous delivery framework where people can leverage Git for their uh, uh, code repository, they can use Maven for continuous integration, they can use Puppet and Chef for scripting, they can manage the backlog of their tasks, they can do code reviews, etc. all done in the cloud for them. It's a lifestyle, Without having hospitality, to manage all those taking care of developers, that's yes. what you got to do. Exactly, you know? that, that's a great analogy. And you know, all of these things, they have to have these tools that they put together, right? And what we're doing yeah. is we're saying, you don't have to worry about putting together those tools, just use them, but if you have some on-prem, you can plug in. Well, we think, we think, Wikibon and SiliconANGLE believe that we have, there's going to be a tsunami of enterprise
enterprise developers. Mm -hmm. With the consumerization of IT now, meaning the cloud, mm -hmm. that you're going to see enterprise development, uh, just a boom in development. You're going to see a lot more activity. Now, I know it's a different in development, but it's not pure cloud native, it's some legacy, but it's going to be a boom. So we think you guys are very well set up for that, certainly with, with, the, with the product. So my final question for you to start this, what's your plans? I mean, sounds great. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about it? Is there events you're happening? Yeah. How are you guys going to um, you know, develop this opportunity? Well, what so are you guys going to do? So the product sets are already there, but we're evolving those product sets at a significant pace. So first of all, you can go to cloud.oracle.com slash try it and try these cloud services and build your applications on it. That's there. We've got a portal called developer.oracle.com where you can get resources on, for example, I'm a JavaScript developer. What's everything that Oracle is doing to help JavaScript developers? I'm a MySQL developer. What's everyone doing to help with that? So they've got that. Then starting at the beginning of next year, we're going to roll out a uh, set of workshops that happen in many cities around the world where we go work with developers hands-on on getting them insight and experience into how to build these rich cloud-native microservices-based applications. So those are some of the things. And then uh, an advocacy program. We already have the ACE program, the ACE director program. Working with that program to really make it a very vibrant, energetic ecosystem that is helping you know, build the uh, uh, sort of sample codes and build the expert knowledge around how the Oracle environment can be used to build really cool microservices-based cloud-native So you're investing. Apps. You're investing. Oh, absolutely. Any big yes. events, use just more little events, any big events, any developer events you guys going to do? No, so, so we'll be doing these workshops and we'll be sponsoring a bunch of non-Oracle developer events and then we will be launching a big developer event of our own. Great, so final question, what's in it for the developer? If I'm a developer, what's in it yeah. for me? Hey, I love Oracle, thanks for, the, thanks for spending the money and investing yeah. in this. Yeah. What's in it for me, why? Yeah. Why should I give you a look? Because you can do it faster with higher quality. So, you know, that microservices application that I was talking about, if you went to any other cloud and tried to build that microservices-based application that got data from the treadmill into a data lake using IoT and the analytics and in the integration with backend applications, it would have taken you a lot longer. You can get going in the language of your choice, using the database of your choice, using standards of your choice, and have no lock-in. You can take your data out, you can take your uh, code out whenever you want. So do it fast with openness. Siddharth, thanks for sharing that developer update. We were talking about it yesterday. You, our prayers were answered. You came <laughs> on the queue. We were like, where's the developer action? I mean, we see that Java 1, you know, we love Java. Certainly JavaScript is awesome and a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And congratulations on the investments and the continuing to bring developer goodness out there. Thank um, you, John. This is the queue. We're obviously, we're developer friendly, sharing that data with you. And uh, we're going to bring more signal from the noise here after this short break. You're watching the queue. Thank <laughs> you.